Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, we're back out trailing today. It's uh, I think the second, uh, well it would be the July 4th weekend for you guys in the US. Uh, in Canada it's just the weekend, so July 6th I think today. And we got a few trucks out today in the Jeep that I want to run today, but I wanted to bring out the, do a follow up video on the Miller Motorsports. I did some work on that thing since my last video I'll leave a link to that up in the top there somewhere right in there I'll leave a link to that video where I had a lot of trouble with that truck uh, ESC issues brownout issues so I thought I'd bring it back out for a quick run today this won't be a long video I don't think because I got a couple other rigs I want to get out running and get some footage on those but I thought I'd bring this sucker back out and see if I can get uh, if my changes that I made did any good so I did some ESC changes and did some programming see if I could get drag brake work in and uh, find out why I got that click I couldn't really figure that out but we're gonna give it a go here we'll do a little bit of footage maybe 15-20 uh, minutes of this video we'll see how much I get but uh, just do some crawling pretty close to the truck here uh, RC Newf may be coming out today to join me so he may be ringing a couple rigs out to join me and we'll do some trailing but uh, so far no snakes and I just had a snake wrangler uh, meet me in the came up from the uh, coulee in the park parking lot there and he said he didn't come across any rattlers just a bull snake today so that's a good thing I'm where there uh, I came across a rattler on my last video so we will keep our eyes open for those because we're supposed to hit plus 28 degrees Celsius today so they're gonna be out and about he did see one bull snake so that's not a big deal so we'll uh, see what we can do with the RC uh, four-wheel drive Miller Motorsport, see if I got it fixed up a bit. And uh, we'll stick close to the Jeep here because I do want to get another rig out today. I just wanted to give this another test on the coolies and see if I got something. So we'll do some cr climbing and some crawling just on a few spots here and see if we got it fixed. All right, so stay tuned. <music> So I just did a little bit of a start warm up here and uh, drag brake seems to be working somewhat but not what I would hope so we're gonna just give this little crawl here a try and see how that drag brake works if you remember from my last video if you watched it as soon as I let go of the throttle she just goes backwards like no drag brake whatsoever and like I said this thing can climb well, there's that click not sure if I got, I don't think I have all diffs locked, just hold on. Nope. There we go. Now we got locked diffs. So we still have that click. So we got some drag brakes. So that's off the throttle and she's coming down a lot slower. So that's good. And I think I put 100% drag brake when I put the programming card in onto it so I still think that I'm going to change this this uh, ESC out and put in the Fusion Pro or the Fusion SE but I'm not sure yet we still have that click and I think that's tranny so I might have to check that out when I tear it apart to put that motor in I'll try that back that down this is a difficult uh, spot here but I want to see how that drag brake works wheel speed oh we almost had her I think I just need more wheel speed to get up there there we go oh I'm sorry right she is that was probably out of the view sorry guys but yeah that, that was better
tough spot. Just can't get any grip. Try it over with just a little bit more over here. There she goes. Just got to pick the right line. I'm trying to take difficult spots. Like I said, it can climb. It is doing a little better, so the changes I did definitely help. So there's the drag brake today. So I'm off the throttle. It's on a steep hill. It is holding it, but not 100%. All right, just, just a little bit, which is okay. I can control it better that way than uh, the last time I was out. She is definitely doing better with the changes I made. Definitely. There's a stick there that stopping the rear tire. So, yep, big root. Oh, something went. I got nothing. Nope, something broke. I can hear the motor turning, but we got nothing. Dry shafts are there. Something definitely in the tranny. See, nothing but trouble with this truck. Yep, that's the motor turning. Shifting from high to low gear. Nothing. But, uh, yep. Well, that one's done for today. Told you this wasn't going to be a quick. Something went in there. Maybe. Fuck. Something broke in the tranny for sure. Oh, yeah. I got, I got, uh, nothing now whatsoever. So we still have, it's not browning out. We've got connection. But something in the transmission has definitely gone. I wonder what that is. All right, well, that's the end of that rig for today. I will have to say, this video was short, guys, so there she be. She's done, what, maybe 10 minutes in? 
15 minutes in and we got more trouble. So something in the transmission let go. Motor's spinning. So Sperger maybe, Pinion maybe, but we've got movement there. So thanks for watching. A little bit of an update on it. I thought I had it and now we got more trouble. So maybe that was the clicking issue that I was having and it finally let go in the tranny. I probably should have took that apart. But I guess I'm going to be taking that apart now. But yeah. So I'm not sure. I can see my cables moving. I got steering. I just got nothing in the tranny. But I can, you can hear the spur gear turning. So something, something definitely broke. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, share. Doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Maybe I'll do an update video when I tear this thing apart. And it's probably not going to be very soon that I tear this thing apart. Uh, I've got other rigs I want to run. It's summertime. But we'll see. Maybe I'll spend an evening tearing it apart and uh, seeing what I broke and getting some parts on order. Because something went. No doubt about that. See? Nothing. Steering's good. It's all free flowing now. Alright guys. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Wheels to the ground. And we'll see you at the next one. Hey guys, just wanted to uh, add a little clip here to the end of that uh, horrible run video of the uh, Miller Motorsports. Uh, I got home. Uh, as you can see, I tore the transmission and motor system out. And tranny's good. Uh, no issues with the transmission. It feels really good. Everything's turning good. Same with the transfer case. Everything in the transfer case is turning good. So not too bad to get the motor out. I didn't disconnect any of the cables or anything. So I just pulled the, the bottom um, skid off and was able to get the motor cover off without too much issue. And it just mounts onto your bottom skid here. And there's your drive shaft uh, transfer there. There's just a, uh, I don't know what the hell you would call that. There's a bearing transfer there for for the trans uh, for the differential going to the front drive shaft so that wasn't too bad coming out it was actually pretty easy and i didn't have to disconnect anything but when i took the motor out this is what i found so i pulled the motor off the transmission and this is exactly how that pinion was so rc4 all drive not really good quality control like that pinion is not at all i don't even know how the thing was running so obviously that that grub screw has has backed off and you can see on there hopefully you guys can see where it was tightened on there you can see it on the shaft let's, let's see if we can get it to zoom in there probably not all right but you can see the marks on the shaft right here where it was on there if I back up a little bit but yeah not good so that pinion was completely off and it was sitting in there like that when I took the motor out so not even catching this uh, this gear here on the inside of the transmission which uh, is on a shaft that feeds in there you can see the gears the planetary there moving right so everything in the transmission is good and everything in the diff the transfer case is good so and it's there like it's very smooth so i'm not impressed with that so I, I was thinking about changing out to the fusion se it is a bit longer of a motor so i may have to do some work getting it to fit so i can put the motor cover back on it may not go back on because uh, if you put the motor cover back on there is a little bit of room there it's, i got the screws in the bottom so i don't like even the screws, like those are Phillips heads. Like, come on now, RC4 drive. Like, what are you using Phillips for? Just, just unreal. Anyways, so there is some room there, but I don't know if that Fusion two and one is going to fit in there. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I haven't decided if I just slam this sucker back in. But I'm still having the issues with uh, uh, programming the ESC for forward reverse. Like, I just can't get it to program. So I'm just 
undecided here yet but i thought i'd show you guys what i found and that that is what happened out on the trail today the pinion just slipped in there and was not engaging anymore and that was the end of it so just wanted to add that guys so not a transmission problem a freaking pinion problem rc4 will drive you need to do some quality control this was not a cheap freaking rig in canada 800 bucks so come on hey guys so we're back uh, it's like uh wednesday i think today so three days after uh, the crawl and the issue that we had again with the uh, miller motorsport uh, the last clip you seen that i found the issue and i did some more work on it so i just wanted to add this clip again it's like i said three days later so i have done some work on this damn thing again um, put everything back together i put the old motor back in i decided to give it another chance uh, i'm not ready to give up on it yet and it i didn't want it to beat me so what i did is i put it all back together put the, the original motor back in and got it running and it was the the drag brake was really bad again and very uh low reverse like no power for reverse just really really slow uh, so I put the programming card back onto the ESC, put it back to factory, tried that, same thing. So I, I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe it was the ESC that was bum. So what I did is I deleted the model because I have taken this off of the stock radio system and put it on the uh, Spectrum Rugged 5. So I did install that right away when I bought this truck. I put the receiver in, got everything hooked up and running. So what I thought I would do is, is maybe it was a radio issue. Um, I went in and tried doing endpoints and reversing things, reversing the the rotation of the motor, the, even changing to the point of changing the wires on the ESC because it doesn't matter which way you got those wires connected. Uh, it just depends on the, the way you got it connected, the way the motor turns. So I did all that. I thought, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete the model off the radio and start fresh. So before I bind with the truck, I set the model up. I had copied down uh, all my endpoints and travel and stuff for the shifting servos and all that good stuff, the two two way uh, shifting uh, switches on, on the rugged. Got all that written down and then I deleted the model and went back and started it and put it all back in. And then I bound the truck to the radio. And I think it has solved my my issue i think it was a bind issue or a radio issue i don't know i can't remember if i uh, started a fresh uh, ad model in the rugged radio or if i just uh, overwrote one that i wasn't using anymore but i don't think i did so maybe i had done something in the radio setting it up i'm not sure but now we have uh full reverse full forward uh way more power in the truck way way more power uh, all the servos are working, all the locking servos are working, the, the four-wheel drive, the d locking diffs, the two-wheel drive system is working, the two-speed transmission is working fine. I think I've got my issue solved and, and I'm knocking on wood here because I, saw, I thought that the last time and of course you've seen the beginning of this video, 10 minutes in, we were pooched. Uh, pinion issue of course, but now we got it set. So I do have a battery in it. I will. Uh, fire it up just to give you a demonstration so i think i've got it figured out um, i'm hoping to get it out again maybe this weekend it's bloody hot here right now and uh, it's supposed to be hot all week and all weekend so i don't know if i'll get out this weekend uh, like 36 celsius 37 celsius so what's that like 90 92 fahrenheit so it's, it's bloody hot so i'm not sure if i'm going to do that but yeah so we we redid everything in the radio and I've got a nice slow crawl. Uh, sorry for the noise, guys, uh, when I'm doing this, but I wanted to show you, show you on the truck what's going on. So now we've got slow crawl. We've got all our steering and uh, way more reverse, and that's in, in low gear, high gear. So now we've got full reverse, and I've got instant brake. So full forward, and it brakes instantly. So I'm hoping that I have the drag brake set right. I can put the programming card back on and uh, see how to piss around with the drag brake. There is some really weird 
uh, programming in this ESC. I looked at the book, I pulled out the book and looked at how they got it programming and they do recommend you can use the, the Hobbywing card uh, to program it and it's got nine programmable uh, items, I think it was nine. I'm just reaching for the card so you can use this card to program it. Uh, you just unplug the fan motor, uh, the fan on the ESC, sorry, and plug that into that and then you can carry on and get it done. So I did go through the book and, and put it to factory and then work back from there. They do have a, in the book, they mark it factory. I could probably grab that for you. Hold on a sec. I didn't want to add too much more to this video, but I didn't want to do a separate video. I wanted to do it all in one uh, since I had not uploaded the video yet and I figured it out. I think I figured it out. My fingers are crossed, knock on wood. So in the book, it gives you the programming right there and all the dark areas is factory. So that's that's where uh, all the settings are in factory. So you've got like mode one, uh, f forward and brake, forward reverse brake or f uh, forward and reverse, which is what I want it for, for crawler mode. Uh, you've got drag brake force, I put it to zero. And then I think I put it at 40, which is option five. Um, 40 or maybe I went 60 I can't remember uh, but I always have one of these cards in my backpack so the next time I take it out if I'm having issues I, I can just uh, hook it up and make some changes the only problem is you got to take this cover plate off uh, the top plate here to get to the AC it's pretty tight in the center there so you got to take that off but I got tools in my backpack anyways uh, then you've got low voltage cutoff you've got uh, start mode punch uh, max brake force and I, and I put that at, at uh, factory at 75% and like it's it's more than that. Like it's just instant break. It stops now. So I might play with that a little bit more. I think it's it's too much. Like it's just instant, right? Uh, then you've got <clears throat> max reverse force, initial brake force. And there's a weird setting here, option one, drag brake force. So I think if you set it to drag brake force, it uh, takes over the number two. The number two takes over what you're doing. So I'm not sure. I put it back to factory, which is uh, 0%, and I still have instant brake. So I, I might double check that, see what I, I put on for the drag brake force. Uh, after that, you have throttle range. I left it at factory, which is 9%, which is normal. And then timing, I left it at factory at 11.25 degrees. You can adjust your timing. Uh, I might play with that, but yeah, so I went through all that and I think we have the issue solved. So all the, you'll hear it on the, on the camera hopefully. I've got my wireless mic on so you might not. Everything is shifting. So low speed, crawl speed, and way faster in reverse. I, I was probably only getting that much speed in reverse before I deleted the, the setting in my radio and, and set it back up again. Um, Rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, and then you can hear locking and unlocking diffs. So I think we're good to go. I thought I'd just uh, add this clip to the end of the video and, and make it one big video. Uh, it's probably pushing almost 25, 30 minutes now, but that's okay, I don't care. Uh, I wanted to show you what I did to try and figure this out, putting the stock system back in and giving it one more try. So that's what we've got. Hopefully I'll get it out uh, soon so that we can do another uh, update video, uh, running video of it and see if I have any more issues with it. Like I said, it's been a non-stop nightmare for me since I took it out of the box and ran it the first time. Uh, I don't hear the clicking uh, anymore. I drove it on the road, or on the road, sorry, on the floor here a little bit and uh, brought it up to a wall to see, uh, give it some force. And I did not hear that click. So I think maybe it was the spear gear just starting to loosen off and slipping a bit. And that's what that click was. And it was just kind of staying engaged and working its way off. So I don't, I didn't hear that. I think we've got that cased. I know I've got the Ford reverse uh, speed cased and I think that's it. So I'm hoping we've got it fixed and we'll find out the next time I take it out. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to add another clip to the end of the video. I don't want to drag it out too much longer. We've got her fixed. Let me shut that off. That's probably annoying. 
Uh, we've, I think we've got her fixed and ready to go for another test run. Uh, hopefully a, a full day of, tr of crawling like my first video which I adjusted my driving habits to deal with the brown outs and the no drag brake and garbage that I dealt with that day. But I think we've got it fixed so hopefully that, that's got it and we'll get her back out on the trail. So thanks for watching again. I know I've said it a couple times now in this video but thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to uh, like, subscribe, share it out. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you're having any troubles with your RC four wheel drive Miller Motorsports like I am. Maybe this video will help you if you're having the same issues. But like I said, RC four wheel drive needs a little bit better quality control uh, when they're getting this stuff from the factory. Uh, I know it's probably coming from where we all know it's probably coming from, but there's gotta be a bit better, more control. Like I paid a lot of money for this rig and all I've been doing is wrenching on it. No broken parts though, haven't had to replace anything. It's beat the shit from that first run that I did. Um, you know, I'm, I'm missing one of the light uh, lenses on the back top there. Both the rubber stoppers on the bump stops here came off. I, I can't find them online at my local uh, hobby st shop that, that brings RC four wheel drive stuff in. I can't even find it on their website. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. I don't want those poking holes into the diff. But yeah, so anyways, I'll leave it at that. And thanks for watching. And like I said, like, subscribe, share. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And, and for those that have just subscribed, I bounced up like 10 since Sunday, since I put up that Zool video and it's getting some good traction. So thank you for everyone for watching and commenting on that one. I'm much appreciated. And remember, everyone stay safe, keep the wheels to the ground, and we'll see you at the next one.